So welcome to Gamma Chins Church and the large two manual and pedal instrument organ by Pachelin, organ builder in Linköping in the 18th century. This instrument is completely preserved. Uh, we have all uh, parts of the instrument, the wind supply, the action, the case, the pipework, everything except one stop, the mixture in the grate, which has been reconstructed. There is a sister instrument where we have the original mixture. So this is unique. It is a wonderful instrument and a wonderful opportunity for us to, to explore sounds and aesthetic of basically the 18th century tradition, um, with some elements of this uh, early romantic style, string stops as we will see. So what I want to do today is to just um, um, yeah, work through the stops of this instrument. I mean, you can see the interior, all the parts I talked about, the bellows and so forth, if you go to the 18th century database where we have um, walkthroughs of the instrument and also a wonderful demonstration of all stops of the organ by Sitz de Fris. He's improvising his way through. Uh, but we take a little different approach now, using a partita by Georg Böhm, Freu dich sehr, um meine Seele, just excerpts of that to, to acquaint ourselves with the instrument. When you get to the console here, you see um, this row of stops, which is, uh, belongs to the Hauptwerk, to the Werk, Huvudwerket, uh, in the center here, though, and played from the first manual. Then follows, second row, the Oberwerk. And the Oberwerk is uh, a four-foot division with a principal eight in the treble. The great is a principal eight division uh, with a principal 16 in the treble. And then we don't really have pedal towers. Those are the eight-foot pipes on the sides here, but we do have the pedal behind, which is rather often the case in Central German, Baltic and Swedish style instruments when um, when there might be not sufficient width. What is interesting is to see that there are uh, uh, dummy pipes, uh, silent pipes on the sides, which give the impression of a kind of pedal division. Uh, but there, it's just spacing, the pedal is placed behind. So we take the principal eight foot, and we take the principal four foot, uh, Hauptwerk and Oberwerk. And just listen to this, uh, to the sound. speech and and then when we listen carefully you can hear a little bit of sizzling in the sound when you're close to the pipe it's almost like it's too much or a little strange or not harmonious but when you're out in the church it gives the the, the, the caring kind of uh, uh, live quality to the sound. So that's the principle. Now we go to the flutes and we have two wonderful uh, wooden flutes. One flauto doppio uh, with uh, double labia in the Hauptwerk and then uh, an open flute in the treble and it is a geduct in the bass in the second manual. <laughs>
lovely forefoot stops, uh, flutes as well. Uh, a piquant raw flute in the Hauptwerk, and a very um, a wider, nice flach flute for in the Oberwerk. So we could play them, listen to them, for example, in this variation. different characters and now we can combine them with the eight foot flutes so the flauta doppio with this um, uh, silvery kind of speechy raw flute and the uh, often flute gedacht with the flach flute so that sounds they sound like this <laughs> wonderful flute sounds. And I think we go on to add the two foot sonorities to this. So we take the Spitzflute 2, the Flute Choir 842 we have in the second manual. And um, uh, we could take also the octave 2 of the first manual. So maybe we should just listen to the octave a little bit. It's rather fluty at the top. And then becomes more principal like as we move down. This is very important. This is the high pitch, highest pitch stop in the organ we will hear later. So, so it blends very well with flutes actually. I wouldn't think so, but let's try that. So we have the flutes 8 4 and the octave 2, and then the flute chorus 2 foot uh, 8 4 2 in, in the um, Oberwerk. scalings are more sensitive to, to um, yeah, fluctuations, figurations like that, but beautiful sounds. So let's go to um, uh, then the um, principles forefoot. So we have the facade principle in the Oberwerk and the inner octave four of the Hauptwerk. And then I play the facade principle first, the second man first. Principal chorus with the flute of the Hauptwerk. No, we take the flute eight with the octave four, and the same geduct with the principal four of the second man.
two foot octave in the whole track. And um, let's not take the uh, uh, flute two. We could do that in the second manual. <laughs> But it's rather, it doesn't blend so well with the principal four. So I will take the view that I come before. Uh, listen to this. We have now the flute and the principal eight. And now I add the gamba. So it gives the second octave a little effect of, of uh, eight, four, two, actually, and blends much better. So we take that for the second manual. Sounds lovely, wonderful. We could now maybe try the reeds. In this organ, we have two trumpets the trumpet eight foot in the grate with the octave four, and we take the a little bit more narrow trumpet eight of the Oberwerk, divided as you see, two stops, some stops are divided like this, and then together with I think the principal four. Um, uh, or maybe we take the flute four, so we hear a little bit more of the trumpet character in the second man. <laughs> of the great eight, four, and two, uh, without the trumpet, and we will listen to that. But first I take the principal chorus with the quint. So we have eight, four, three, two. Uh, so we can hear with the, with the quint and then without. Uh, so this is the rich kind of eight foot uh, ch chorus of the principals. <laughs> Principal two in the second manual. We have the flute chorus, uh, but we could add the quintadine eight to the principal four and the gamba four, and then we have quite a colorful registration. <laughs> um, so that's the richest. Uh, richest sounds that give us a little bit of two foot pitch through the Villa da Gamba. If we take the scharf, we get into the mixture business of this instrument. But before we do that, I would say let's try the uh, 842 uh, uh, combination with the Quintadine 16 in the grate. <laughs> Wonderful, nice sound like that. Adding the quint. Um. And if I add now the mixture, I have to use two stops. It's divided. So you can choose either, like it says here, mixture four choirs. So that's, we have four 
um, ranks in the mixture, and here it says CC. So if I add that one, we hear octaves come. And if I add the one on this side, it says EG. So we have here a third and a fifth. So it's like a tertian rank. And with the color of these two, it is a very rich manual sound. And um, and if I want the melody to be heard a little bit more, I could take the principal 16 in the treble. And in this last variation, I think the idea is full organ. So let's take the pedal for the first time. We have principal 16, 8, and 4, and we have a bassoon 16, a posaune. Um, so we could add that. We also have a coupler that um, uh, we can add. The pedal is behind, so this was really built from the beginning to offer opportunities for balance. And we take the trumpet also of, of the great. So. <laughs> Cheers, Reed Plano sound, which is very typical for this uh, organ style, for center German style, which is a source of inspiration. There was the connection between the Östergötland school and Schelin Vistenius with the, the Baltic states and, and Central Europe. Um, yes, so that gives us a little bit a sense of the colors and the things in the instrument. What we didn't hear um, was the, um, the solo stop, uh, Vox Humana, uh, of the um, um, second manual. And let's do that. We can now combine, as an accompaniment, the flute eight and the gamba eight. And then we take the Vox Humana, which starts um, let's have it here, I can see, now I have only the Vox Humana, beginning on tenor G, and moving up, and it's a very, it's short length resonator read, so we have the trumpet, full length resonator, this is short, with a little bit of a, of a hat, <laughs> and, and this very beautiful vocal uh, nasal sound, so let's add the, Flute eight, and maybe the forefoot that fills out uh, this sound. So we can we can just pick something. If, um, maybe we can do um, the. Um, or we can have uh, just a little sound like this. Um, Component with the flutes and then in the pedal uh, the subas and the octave eight. Context with this kind of sounds, uh, we may um, by Krebs a choral. I think I have something here. And we come a little bit to style issues. When I heard this sound, I thought it was really beautiful, but um, it is uh, different from Böhm Baroque aesthetics. This is a little bit of sense of very human, pietistic, emotional, maybe with the addition of, of a tremulant um, in the music uh, for the hymn Herzlich. Uh, lieb, 
Herzlich lieb habe ich dich, Herr. Ob ja, da tue ich dich, Herr. that with this music fits the aesthetic of the organ very well. So when we come now to this type of registration and two mandals and pedal, I think we should go to trio registrations also. Before we go to the trio registrations, I think we should just explore one really important thing with this organ type, and that is the idea of complementary sounds, of blending, of stops with the same pitch. So if we listen to the principle eight, and then we add um, a little bit, it's, it's rather, uh, it's very, has overtones in life, you know, but uh, I can imagine this uh, uh, together with the flute eight. You hear that the flute sort of uh, gives a little bit of body around. It doesn't interfere and it doesn't have any problems with the speech. The speech of the principal is rather clear with a rich, interesting sound. The flauta doppio is much faster with a T, T, T. So when I add them together, we hear first flauta doppio. And then principle. And they are very complimentary, nice. Now, the gamba. So it adds a little bouquet of overtones. It doesn't do this like the flute, gives a little bit of body, it gives something up here. So we have a fantastic blend. And uh, an organ building master like Gottfried Silbermann said that he voiced the principles in such a way that they needed to be combined with other eight-foot stops. They shouldn't be played alone. Here, I think we can really enjoy just playing the principle, but we can also experience now how well it blends. And when we go to the second manual, we have the Gedacht eight with its open flute at the top. There 
is a quintadena. Open flute, quite a nice fluty speech. And now with the quintadena. Very different character, lots of overtones. And let's just listen to the quintadena speech alone. Very distinct, like a little bowing and, and fast compared to the flute, which for the gedacht. Flute. It takes a little bit more time. So both the speech is complementary and certainly the color with the roundness of the flute and the color of the quintadine. When we work with the soft stops, this combination of either gedacht, flute, quintadine, um, and maybe even with a principle, like we have a principle eight here, so let's... It is similar to the speech of, of and color of the first manual principle eight. And here. Quintadina really gives a different color, and we could, I don't know whether the couplet works, we we'll see. Now we have a bouquet of sounds, principles, flutes, quintadina strings. Uh, that's really wonderful and important to use. Uh, occasionally. And when we now go for three registrations, the knowledge of the eight foots blending is very important. So uh, I've taken a trio by Krebs and um, it has two parts. So one is a little bit more lively, the first one is a little bit kind of fluty. So we could, we could um, do different things. We could try just to take the eight uh, and four flutes like we heard in the Patita before, um, and then see how they work, maybe with the Subas and the Octave 8. Uh, we have also the print, the Subas is of course a Subas, a Gedacht, covered, so we can listen to that in the pedal. Ah, it's really full in sound, and I forgot to say it's a double Subas, so it has much more volume and two. Uh, mouth, mouth, so to speak. Uh, then we have the principle, which is open, full length, a wooden principle. So it's really in the back, like bowing, uh, and you can combine them also because they are the the, the, the subas is very fast in speech round and then we have the overtones of the principle. Uh, but in the tree now we try with the eight foot um, uh, octave together with the subas. And without the coupler. <laughs> players, traverso players, with a little bit of continue. Um, but let's explore the eight-foot combinations. So we take the ones we have in the grate, which is the flute eight, with the gamba. It's very often, you know, that these who are different overtones or fundamental, they combine and make a beautiful entity of sound. And uh, we could take then the gedacht with the quintadine. 
So the other kind of combination of two eight foots. So this is kind of quite warm and lovely. This is a little bit, a little bit nasal, maybe sometimes a little bit sad in character. Um, so let's try. Actually, I think I take this in the upper part, the quintet in first, and then I take the gamba alone in the left hand. Lovely, I think, wonderful balance. Now, if I add the flute here with the string, I might actually, yeah, let's try first with the quintadine up here. something which is really interesting and we think was part of this tradition they often built an eight foot string in one manual and a four foot in the other manual so if we now take the eight foot string of the Hauptwerk and then the four foot string played an octave lower in the left hand let's see what happens <laughs> Pastoral Stimmen, uh, strings, pastoral character in Central German tradition. Here we find it with Jolene. And you know, Abbe Vogler was Kapellmeister at the opera in Stockholm for quite many years in the 17, I don't know, at least in the 1790s. And he had contact with, with uh, Per Jolene. And uh, he probably introduced, inspired Jolene to build these string stops, which are when you look at the pipe, they go a little bit like this, trattformig, so not even, and are rather narrow scaled, have this kind of narrow principle uh, character sound. Uh, we could do another combination. We can take the flaut with the flute, uh, uh, with the string and the grate, and then we can take the four foot gamba with the flute four. They blend beautifully also. Um, my favorite Three registrations of a kind that one can imagine when you see registrations like in uh, Kaufmann's Harmonische Seelenlust, chamber music combinations, softer stops together, were most frequently used for choral variation settings and for trios. But we are now, um, yeah, we, we could also, uh, in this livelier part, 
do um, another combination. We could use the principles, go in that direction here, maybe take the, um, the um, uh, combination with the Voxomana. Flute 8 and 4 and add the Quintadine. Which gives lots of color and life. And then maybe the principal 16, when we have the principal 8 of the great. So the principal 8 alone, I think now, the great with the read registration here. <laughs> So like an oboe, like a human voice, like, you know, uh, instrumental things, talking about chamber music, like uh, sounds, this is certainly it. And if we go to the trio sonatas by Bach, um, string trios were the most common. And in the organ, at that time, the principal stops were uh, closest to that kind of full overtone rich sound with prompt, uh, like bowing speech. So here we can take the principal eight, the great and the principal four of the Oberberg, like we know from trio registration. So we can just explore quite wonderfully here. Um, so the, the um, just the beginning of the second trio sonata, C minor, by Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> balanced uh, principal sounds for trios and of course you could here also add the gamba and maybe even the flute for the right hand and then you can add the viola de gamba with the principal four uh, small differences in nuances with still eight foot registrations but so rich and wonderful <laughs> movement here which is a little bit more in uh, like a fugue um, we could of course also play with 8-4 it's, it's still with 8-4 um, chamber music like registrations and they sound very rich and wonderful uh, so here I would take the principal 8 and octave 4 and then the question is I could either do the principal 4 with the uh, viola da gamba, which would sound something like this. So it's a, a little bit 
in the background. So another possibility is to take the Gedacht um, with the principal four and with the Quintadine. Uh, then I get a sound which balances better. So from the beginning then... And then I forgot about the octave. <laughs> and I was also listening to the pedal. to have just 16-8, but I know when we move on here, it's not going to be clear enough in relation to the other. So we will add the um, uh, octave 4 in the pedal, so then also the subas, so it sounds like... So let's try that instead. We're getting rather close to richer sounds, which is more uh, like plano registrations. So let's talk a little bit about plano um, combinations. <laughs> 